So there is no doubt about it that The Acolyte is by far the worst failure under Disney Star Wars, under Lucasfilm in general by Kathleen Kennedy's lack of leadership skills and how she hires people out there like Leslie Headland, the former personal assistant of Harvey Weinstein, by the way, and yes, that always needs to be said. But focusing on what's been going on after the fallout with the Acolyte cancellation when season two got pushed all the way into the trash by Bob Iger, by the Disney executives, because, well, they had no other choice but to do that after the Nielsen ratings reports came out, especially for the finale. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at Mike Zero One. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. So there's been a lot of drama going on with the Acolyte, not just what's been going on behind the scenes between Lucasfilm and the Walt Disney Company. You also have a petition going on right now of a group of Disney Star Wars fans that are calling for the Acolyte Season 2 to get reinstated. This, by the way, is something that Kathleen Kennedy, Leslie Headland, and among others have been trying to do behind closed doors to no avail. Now, looking at Leslie Headland specifically, the showrunner and director of this thing that fell miserably with the Acolyte, had more things to say in the wake of her getting fired and removed from all Lucasfilm projects, just as Amanda Stenberg was, by the way, as well. Now, what's interesting about this is that these people, Leslie, Amanda, Kathy, they will never admit failure, they will never admit any kind of mistakes that they applied to Star Wars or any kind of deliberate agenda that ruined the entire experience. They will also never admit that what they did was against George Lucas's philosophy. So let's jump into this. Now, with Bob Iger and Kathleen Kennedy already engaged in multiple arguments after the Acolyte's failure and all the drama surrounding it, it caused behind the scenes. One major development going on now has more to do with Leslie Headland and her reaction and response to the fandom after getting fired from all projects associated with Lucasfilm and Star Wars. Now, Leslie delivered the following. As a woman, I believe it was my responsibility to create a program that would expose the elephant in the room, and that is the toxic side of the fandom that remains opposed to DEI, and especially the LGBTQ community. When I was writing the story I knew that was important to me as a director and one who comes from that community, and we always knew going into this that we would be dealing with toxic men that are seemingly frightened of powerful female roles in Star Wars. This industry can be very, can be very tough. At one point, you are working on many different things, and then at one point, not so much, and it can be so frustrating to deal with. But I knew what I created was great and for the many different communities that needed a proper spotlight in the show. I think far too often we see this especially in Star Wars, where the belief is that this is a franchise mainly geared toward men, and that is just not the case at all. I also would like to address the negative criticism that we received on social media, and I just don't think all of that was authentic at all. It just wasn't because, you know, you have this silent majority that is afraid to speak their mind about a franchise this large, especially with the Acolyte. I saw the reviews on many sites like Rotten Tomatoes and all the like, and the negative criticism was just obvious review bombing and fake. It was the epitome of all of that. There are many examples that I can explain all day long about the silent majority that love the Acolyte, and it's just so heartwarming to see that there are those begging for a season two after our show was canceled. Now guys, let me just stop here before I move on about what Leslie is spewing again. So obviously she's taking out her anger on the fans again after everything that happened behind closed doors at Lucasfilm after she lost the Acolyte season two, after she lost so many Acolyte spinoff shows and many different positions at Lucasfilm, and is going on that train, the blame game train again of fake reviews this, fake reviews that, false criticism, yada yada yada. All that nonsense, right? So that's basically what she's going on about again, and it's getting very old and tiresome at this point. It just seems like that Leslie, Amanda, and Kathy tend to repeat the same exact thing to just keep their agenda intact, to keep their overall ideology intact over at Lucasfilm. Now interestingly enough, this is where things begin to go downhill. Now she goes on to continue, 
This is the number one issue in the Star Wars fandom right now, where we are always dealing with men who believe that women do not belong in Star Wars, and it just makes the entire process frustrating when you're writing and directing something as big as this. Kathy gave me so many pointers on how to ignore those fans and only focus on myself. It's even more frustrating when you have so many plans after Season 1, only to see those plans getting pushed to the wayside after all the false criticism over the show. I was honestly shocked that we came to that decision to cancel the Acolyte, and it's something I heavily disagree with, and felt it was the wrong decision by Mr. Iger, and how all the stories it was going to tell, that I was going to tell, just aren't going anywhere as of right now. I just believe all the criticism was blown out of proportion, and was nowhere near close as big as it was being reported. So guys, again, I mean, Leslie Headland is saying once more, that she believes that the criticism was quote unquote blown out of proportion and that it was just being overhyped. It wasn't overhyped. I mean, we saw this right from day one when the Acolyte teaser trailer dropped, followed by the official trailer. It all got ratioed across the board, across all forms of social media. That was your first major telltale that the Acolyte was going to be pretty much one of the biggest disasters by Lucasfilm of all. We're seeing this also at Snow White, and we've seen this before with other projects in the past couple of years, but nothing like this, you know, has actually happened in 2024 and what looms for 25. So again, I mean, Leslie Headland, I think, is just coping at this point. She is trying to essentially hang on to whatever is left of the Acolyte spotlight and limelight while it begins to just dwindle day by day. Now, interestingly enough, again, with that being said, she goes on to conclude, I just believe all the criticism was false. It's 2024 and we are always dealing with fake reviews and fake criticism and it's a tough challenge to overcome when studios are so easily convinced about the so-called criticism. So let me just say one thing about Leslie here is that, yeah, you could say fake reviews all the time. That's one thing. But it's another thing to say this after the Nielsen ratings reports came out where those are legitimate, the numbers do not lie, especially the Nielsen numbers, they do not lie. And what we saw at the finale was a deal breaker for Lucasfilm, a deal breaker for Disney. They could not stay on board with the season two after that. There was just no way of lying about that at that point. So here you have Leslie again, really just trying to cope very much hard with the Acolyte, with it being a quote-unquote success from the silent majority that doesn't want to speak up. I don't think there's any silent majority, if you ask me, guys. Uh, I think that everyone spoke up about this show. There are people on the smaller end that love this show, and that's fine and all, but the majority absolutely despise this thing and everything that it stood for, going against George Lucas's lore and philosophy of the franchise, going against the core the overall principles of what Star Wars is all about, right? That's basically what a lot of fans had issues with, and not to mention the deliberate agenda that was basically the biggest thing of all. But overall, the writing, the directing, the acting was just so subpar. I would like to hear what everyone has to say about all this below in the comments, and if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys later. Yeah.